Hi, I'm Lizzie Harper. I'm a botanical and natural history illustrator. And this film today is going to be a follow up in my quest for a synthetic sable brush. So most of the time I use pure sable brushes. This is a Winter and Newton Series 7 and it's a number one. And this is the brush I use all the time. Um, however, as a committed vegetarian, etc i'm thinking that perhaps a synthetic sable might be a good idea so i recently made a film in which i tested several other brushes and my favorite out of that batch was the rosemary and company spotter red dot it still wasn't perfect and as soon as i'd finished making the movie i went back to my winter and newton brushes thanks to a lot of suggestions from people who watched the film i've got a whole new batch to test today so these are the ones i'll be testing in this film this is the Da Vinci Cassanio, and the Da Vinci Cassanio is a synthetic squirrel hair. Uh, this one, which has got a really long nib, it's really, um, really long point, it's really interesting, is called a Princeton Neptune script, if you can see. And that one is a synthetic squirrel also. These two are both synthetic sables. The first is another Razor and Company one. This is a, a pointed red dot rather than a spotter red dot. So I'll be trying that one, which was suggested by botanical illustrator Polly O'Leary. So we'll see how I get on with that one. And this last one is from Jackson's Company in Britain, and it's a Kite S561. And that is also a synthetic sable. Um, and all of these brushes are size ones because that's the size that I use. The um, first brush I'm going to test is this one, which is the Princeton Script Neptune. And this one again is a number one. <clears throat> and this one is a synthetic squirrel. So looking at it, the first thing I'm struck by is how alarmingly long its bristles are. Um, but let's see how they work. So I have already mixed up. Oh my gosh, uh, <laughs> just even even the way the brush works in the in the paint feels really weird to me. OK, I'm not going to be used to this. Uh, what kind of a point can I get there? OK, let's see. So this is a common knapweed, which is a plant I need to illustrate that I've drawn up. Um, I'm going to try and paint around the camera. So, yeah, OK, it's holding its point quite nicely. The paper I'm working on, which is the paper I always work on these days, is fluid 100 and I'm using the verse side of it the wrong side of it I suppose you might say um, because I did a pencil rough on the other side that didn't get used but I don't like wasting paper so I'm reusing it okay so far so good seems to be going on okay uh, recharging the paintbrush feels very odd to me because the Nib is so long. Right, I've zoomed into the leaf that I'm working on. And apologies if the camera shakes slightly, it's attached to my desk lamp. So every time I move, it moves slightly. I really, I have ordered something to fix that, but it's not arrived yet. OK, so how's this brush working? How's this um, Princeton script Neptune going? It's OK. You know, the paint's going on OK. It's keeping its, its nib, which is really important to me. Illuminating here the edge. And... These tests are quite difficult because you see the thing is because you've got a camera over your work you're painting in a slightly different way anyway so you're not sure whether <laughs> the differences in the way you're painting are because the rubbish is good or possibly bad or because you're working at a really weird angle. I've also got a piece of my sweater in amongst the paint which is not going to help anything. So yeah look at that it's really really long nib. And I thought it would be unwieldy, but it's not. It seems to work okay. So, yeah, I'm going to keep going with this. I'm going to plot in these greens. 
and then once they're dry I'll come back and see just like I did with the last film comparing synthetic watercolor brushes I'll come back and see how it um how well it does with applying wet washes but so far so good I'm I'm impressed I don't like the feel of the long nib when I go in to mix a brush but that I'm sure is because I'm not used to it but look at it it's it is holding its nib so far um yeah it's a contender I've done those top few leaves with the uh really forgot what it is the Princeton script now I'm liking the way the brush is working but what I'm really not liking is mixing the colors it just for me this long I think it's probably a calligrapher's brush I suppose but this long um, brush nib it just makes me feel really weird I feel too distant from the colors that I'm mixing so what I'm doing right now is mixing up a slightly paler tint to go on top of that um, that leaf that I've been working on so let's see how that works out. Okay. Now this paint is much wetter than what I've applied so far. What I liked about this brush is it was very good at holding its um its point with the dry brush technique, which is what I use. How it's doing with this. It's all right. Sometimes you have to go over the same place several times to get it to leave a mark. Um, that's probably because the tip is so, so very fine. Yeah, that wash is working OK. Yeah. It's all right, this. I think for me, the problem would be getting used to that really, really long bristle. I think I would um, almost inevitably really struggle to adapt to that but actually if you use the brush right so the phone went and I've totally lost track of everything I was saying but I was putting a watercolor wash using the Princeton Neptune on top of this leaf it's going quite well um there's because the nib is it's not a nib because the point is so sharp there's that's almost a fault because sometimes the line is just so light that you have to go over it several times. There's a softness to the line, which I'm not entirely convinced about. But it's a da it's a, a really fine. Um, it's holding its it's holding its point beautifully. I'm really really impressed by that. Uh, okay, so now let's put on top of that one more. Again, it's this mixing. Look. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Look how long that brush is. Ah. Um, so that's a really pale tint. Go on top. Let's see how it manages that. I have no doubt it'll be fine. Yeah, okay. So there we go. So there's that leaf done with the Princeton Neptune. I did these other ones um, while I was on the phone. So I suppose I ought to work into them as well um and then we'll move on to the next synthetic brush in summary the princeton neptune script i'm going to really struggle getting used to the length of the nib when it comes to mixing paint the point is absolutely excellent um there's a slight softness to it and because I only use the tip of the brush the well doesn't get filled up so you have to keep going back to your colour mix quite a lot but it's um I'm very impressed by the way that the point holds that's really impressive um okay so that's Neptune Princeton script size one and now let's time let's time that doesn't even make sense now we're gonna move on to the next brush which is gonna be Da, 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 da. yeah so this is made by jackson's art which is a company i think they're based in london it's an s561 and it's a number one size kite and it says it's a synthetic sable so that's quite a nice looking nib and it's not a million miles from my um winter newton sable nibs it looks slightly bigger but let's have a go so i'm going to work into this leaf with this one. Let's see 
how we get on now i'm quite lucky i'm quite lucky with um with the plant i'm choosing because even though it isn't in flower there's certainly basil rosettes around there's loads of leaves around okay so mixing up with the paint it's quite it's holding its tip but it's a bit it looks a bit heavy to me let's see how we get on oh okay already i'm slightly unhappy i mean various points came up from the last synthetics oh god that's blunt that's really blunt um various various issues came up from the last video that i did and people were so they've been really helpful with putting forward ideas of what oh this is awful putting forward ideas of what other brushes i should try um and what what brushes they do or don't get on with but there's several people who just said you know you've got to bear in mind you might just sometimes have a dud brush um so one of the ones in the last series somebody which had a loose hair they said somebody pointed out that that was just unfortunate and just because of that it shouldn't necessarily mean that i should write off those entire brand of brushes and that's true but at the same time if you're kind of doing a test and the only one you get is bad then i mean i'm not going to keep on trying if i'm not convinced i'm not convinced by this at all um it's quite blunt and in fact i'm slightly worried that i may not actually want to continue using it because it might compromise the illustration so yeah it, it's the well is big so it's it's holding a lot of color at one time and that is nice um and i mean it does have a point but the point is not fine enough for me i need the point to be less blunt it's um it's not sharp enough that's all right but I don't think, in this case, I don't think it's a matter of getting used to it. I think that just is not, yeah, for me, that's not sharp enough. Um, maybe if I had a, a style where I worked a bit looser, then this brush would be good. And I believe, I can't remember what I didn't write down, which is silly of me, was the comparative prices of these. So I'm a very loyal cost customer to, to Jackson's Art, so I'm a bit annoyed that I've not, found myself falling in love with their brush because I would like to be falling in love with their brush I think it's quite a cheap alternative as well I think well I, I know as a fact ah, I know as a fact that every single one of these brushes I'm testing today is significantly cheaper than my than my Winsor & Newton Series 7s which are really expensive and of course as I say made of sable Although, again, somebody was leaving some comments about the synthetic, the first synthetic brush video that I did. And they were talking about sable. And a sable is a, it's actually a, just almost another word for a weasel. And the hairs they use are from their tail feathers. Um, and this correspondence suggested that the weasels actually were being used for something else anyway. So as a brush user, maybe you don't need to feel totally guilty um, because the sable that was used for brushes was a byproduct from another use of these little animals which i believe are, are bred commercially um, but then i don't know what that would be i went down a bit of a rabbit hole or a weasel hole looking up weasel harvests and weasel festivals um but i think i think maybe i <laughs> got something wrong Right, um, so the plant I'm drawing today is the common knapweed. Um, I have a lot of it growing in my garden and that's out of choice. So I, I've planted a lot of plugs of knapweed because it's extremely good for pollinators. It's a native wildflower in the UK um, and it is beloved by bees and hoverflies and lepidoptera you know moss and butterflies and i think i read somewhere that it has the highest of the wildflowers it produces per weight more nectar than any other wildflower something like that um so it's all over my garden and i 
I love it because it really does bring in the animals, the wildlife, and it brings them in really late in the season as well. So I will often have some of them that are still in bloom, oh, way into, way into kind of October and things. At which point you can imagine all the washed out male bee drones and the flies and hoverflies are very grateful to have just something to be able to sip at. <clears throat> Although I was recently reading a book called Buzz in the Meadow, I think, by Dave Goulson, who also has written about bumblebees in A Sting in the Tail. Uh, and I've got to a part about neonicotinoids, which are pesticides, and how they build up in the soil, and how, although they do not outright kill bees, they over time massively reduce the capacity of the colonies to survive because the bees get lost they basically they can't find their way home so they'll go out foraging and they simply can no longer oh this brush is annoying they simply can't get back to um the nest and the whole nest becomes weakened and you have brood death and all that kind of stuff um and the nests that do survive Oh, this, this brush is no good. Um, nests that do survive produce a lot less queens. A lot less queens means a lot less ongoing genetic variation, which means the likelihood of ongoing survival of these bumblebees is compromised. Uh, um, anyway, I'm talking about brushes, not about the climate crisis. Right, so this one, Jackson's Kite... I'm really not enjoying. It's not holding its point for me. And in fact, if you look carefully, where are we? There's a little, can you see? I don't know if you can see. There's a tiny hook that's already developed with only five minutes use. So this is not, um, this is not a brush I'm going to be using. In fact, I think I might stop just there. I'm now going to, I'm going to put on that wash, that top wash using this colour, which is the same colour. Oh, I haven't talked to you about what the colours are. So <clears throat> mixing up this green, is that spring green there from Daniel Smith coupled with um, cobalt blue, which is a Windsor and Newton pan, and yellow ochre, which is a Windsor and Newton pan as well. Um, did I put anything else in there? I think I might put a touch of that, which is gold green, but it's not a very complicated mix, this one. So let's see, maybe it, maybe this brush will blow me away with the magnitude and majesty of its washes. Or maybe not. No, this is just too blunt for me. It's not It's not going to work. Um, it, it's not like it hasn't got a point. It does have a point, but the point is absolutely not sharp enough. And in fact, for the good of this illustration, I need to stop using this brush before it compromises the whole picture. So yeah, in summary, I'm afraid Jackson's Kite S561. Um, I would imagine for people who do bigger washes, this would be great because the well works really well. And the point, it does have a point. It does have a point. But the point is not sharp enough for my purposes. So yeah, this is not one that I'm going to be using. Moving swiftly on, uh, this is another one in the Rosemary series. So this is Rosemary and Company again. The ones I tested in the last video were... Um, I think Spotter Red Dot and my friend Polly O'Leary who is a brilliant botanical illustrator said oh no what you want to try is the pointed red dot and in fact she was gracious enough to send me one so thanks Polly um, so I'm trying this one and let's see how we get on so it looks like it's got a beautiful point oh, stop banging the and let's see I'm going to keep working on the um on the leaf that I was working with the Jackson's kite on. How does that nib look when it's wet? Yeah, that's not bad, actually. That's not bad at all. Yeah, that's quite sharp. Let's see how it is on the page, shall we? So, working on this side of the leaf. Uh, what am I doing? Doesn't feel too bad at all, actually. I mean, I know, I know they must be good because a lot of botanical illustrators use Rosemary and Company and wax very lyrical about them. And when there are loads and loads of people who use a piece of equipment 
to produce work which is, you know, far superior to my own, you have to listen to what they're saying. Um, so, yeah, I would expect these to be good. This feels quite nice. I'm, I'm enjoying this. This is not bad at all. It doesn't feel 100 miles. It doesn't feel 100 miles from my um, Winter and Newton, which is always a good sign. Yeah, it's nice. The point isn't quite as crisp as the Neptune script, but then it doesn't have that extraordinary long tip, which for me was a, a bit of a deal breaker because I'm just not used to it. I mean, the fault there was not the brush, but it was it was my fault. Okay, so I'm enjoying this. This is good for me. I, 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 it's holding paint nicely. I don't have to keep going back to the paint box all the time that point is very sharp and it's not messing me up yep and the yeah it's not splaying or anything and where it has kind of run together that's the fault is mine not the brushes and i'm trying to crisp up some of what happened with the jackson's kite Yeah, I'm going to keep going with this leaf, but I'll report back in a few minutes. So I continued working with the Rosemary and Company pointed red dot. And weirdly, after about 10, 15 minutes, it's become a lot blunter. So these lines here aren't nearly as sharp as the ones I did to start with on this side of the leaf, which is disappointing um, because to start with, it felt really good. It's got a, a weight to it, which feels lovely and like it holds a lot of paint in it as well. Uh, let's see how he does in washes can you see it's almost like there's the tip and somehow the brush below the tip has got involved in a way i'm not expecting it to have done so i'm a bit confused by that because the first five minutes with this brush was really very pleasant but now i'm i think struggling would be a little excessive but I'm not enjoying the experience nearly as much now I feel like the brush has lost some of its edge some of its quality so it feels a bit flattened so yeah because of that I'd say that still the Neptune is so far my favorite and in fact after using the Neptune I did find that in knocking out some others of these leaves I just was interested to know which of the brushes I would pick up just to get on with it. And it was definitely the Neptune. Um, this one up here, okay, so this is the Rosemary Pointed again. Putting in that top wash. It's not the top of the top wash. Top of the top wash. Top of the day to you. No, it's um, the next wash. And there's going to be one more wash on top of that. Yeah, it's all right. It's not great. I mean, as with everything, you've got you to have a little think about what you're used to. And what I'm used to is my Winsor & Newtons. Um, but just for the rest of this leaf, which I started with the kite, I'm going to momentarily, I know there's one more brush to test, I'm going to momentarily go back to go back to the Princeton. Oh, you see, the nib's great. I just am so, I'm just not used to the nib because it's so long and I don't enjoy mixing the colours with the nib. Again, something else that came up in my videos over the years is a lot of people have pointed out to me that I should not be using these beautiful brushes, certainly not my Winsor Newton ones, to um, mix colour with. They say mix colour with something else, something that is not so expensive, that's not so pricey because of course the mixing scrabbles up the brush and destroys it and this is a very good point but the problem with that is if I were to stop and have a brush for mixing and a brush for painting I would never ever get anything done it would just it would just take too long I mean all of these illustrations that I do in order to make it a viable career I need to paint quite fast um, which means that shortcuts need to 
need to work and having a different brush for mixing and applying the paint is simply not going to work for what I do although I know it's a good suggestion yeah I like the Neptune it's not perfect but I do like it um, <clears throat> okay I'm just going to finish up this leaf now so the conclusion about the Rosary and Company <coughs> pointed de red dot is that to start off with, they were absolutely brilliant. Um, there was a good weight. The well held a lot of paint. The point was exquisite. Really enjoyed it. But after about 10 minutes of use, went off the boil and just felt blunt. And I felt like the back of the bristles were somehow touching the ground when I used the tip in a way that I wasn't expecting. Um, however, as I say, it's a brand that a lot of really good illustrators swear by, and I can understand why, because that, that tip is, is really quite special. So yeah, that's, that's the Rosary and Company. Um, I still prefer the Neptune, but then there's a problem with the length of, the length of bristles. Right, next up on this last bit, put that one down, bring this one up, is the... Da Vinci Cassanio. There we go. Um, and that one is, if I look at my notes, I think I've said already, it's a synthetic squirrel. Oh, the other synthetic squirrel was the Princeton Neptune. Weird. Okay. So, yeah, so it's got an interesting little shape, hasn't it? It's quite a kind of barrel shaped um, point. Uh, but the point looks quite good, although already I can see, I don't know if you can couple of loose hairs coming out sideways. That's not going to make me very happy. Maybe they'll disappear when I put them into the water. Okay, let's see. So I'll crack on with this one and let's see what happens. I really am sorry about the shaking. As soon as I get my exciting little filming tool, the better. Okay. So I've got to mix up some more of this paint. So that's a, another good test. So here's some of this, um, like I was saying, Daniel Smith Green and I wanted to mix it in with Cobalt Blue. Now I know a lot of people keep colour swatches. I don't keep colour swatches. Um, I think I think they're a really useful tool for a lot of people but for me I'd much rather just mix up fresh every time and it becomes sort of second nature. It becomes quite easy. Over time it becomes quite easy to do that. You sort of learn which colours you need to add to get where you need. Uh, I hope that doesn't sound big-headed. So there's yellow ochre here. Pop that in there. That's still way too blue. Put a little bit more yellow ochre in. That's uh, getting there. And then balance it out again with a bit of cobalt. Yeah, that's kind of it. Close enough. Let's double check against the leaf. There's the actual leaf. There's my colour. Come on a piece of paper. I'll do. I'll do, pig. Right, okay. My leaf goes back in the water. And here we go with this particular paintbrush. Oh my gosh. Not liking the look of that tip. Let's see if I can get it at a different angle to start with. So yeah, this is the Da Vinci Cassanio. Wow, I'm already really anxious about this. Look, where, where's my blade gone? Look, there's a hook on it. There's a hook on it. I don't like brushes which are hooky. Okay. So hook or no hook, let's see what we can get out of this one. Okay. It's hooked, but it's sharp. Hmm. Too early to say. Uh, when I put it back into the paint, it comes out very laterally flattened. Going up into these colours, what's happening? Uh, it's kind of holding them apart a bit, but not nearly as um. The lines. The lines are better than the Jackson kite, but not nearly as fine as they were. On the Neptune. God, look at the hook on that. That's really no good. And it was perfect when it came out of the out of the 
It's not a ferrule. What's the name for the plastic sleeve that paintbrushes come in? Maybe it is a ferrule. Well, that goes on the end of a walking stick, isn't it? My dad used to be obsessed by ferrules. He used to make me go and buy them. It's like one of the impossible things that you can't really buy. Go and buy a sky hook. Go and buy a tin of striped paint. Go and buy a ferrule. I now know where you can go to buy ferrules, but at the time, age 20-something, and with my mind on other things, sourcing a ferrule was not easy. Hardware stores, in case you need to know. Okay. Um, mm. The hook is... I'm finding the hook really distracting. I would not say I'm enjoying this. I'm making it work, not enjoying it working. And this has to be a really fine line and it's not going to be... Okay, despite the hook, it's doing okay, but I'm just very anxious with every single line because of the hook, you see. So that's not ideal. I mean, the point is good. If it didn't have this lat, didn't heave. If it didn't have this lateral compression, um, then I'd like it more as well. Can you see if I rotate it, can you see what I mean about it being laterally compressed? Yeah, I think one of the other brushes did that to us as well, didn't it? But I can't remember. I've got no decent long-term memory whatsoever. Okay. And I'm going to be even dimmer than usual today because I currently have COVID, although I feel absolutely fine. One of the lovely things I found out about COVID is that when you have COVID, your brain shrinks by 3%, which considering how small my brain is anyway, I do not have the luxury of losing 3% of what little is there. My family think it's hilarious. Although I don't know why, because they've all got COVID as well. Ha. Right. Oh, that's a nice tip. I like that line. That's nice. But I sort of, with each mark that I'm making hey I don't know where to hold the brush to compensate for the weird irregular shape of it if that makes sense to you I mean I can see that the tip is the tip is worth worth talking about it's a good tip but because of the way that the entire shape of the brush and everything else has gone I can't trust the tip. I don't feel I don't feel safe with it. I don't feel that it's gonna Yeah, I don't feel that it's reliable. Who knows what's gonna go wrong at any particular moment. It's it's making me nervous. Made me nervous, took me in and gave me breakfast. I've never been given breakfast by one of my paintbrushes. I'm so ungrateful. Um okay. Yeah, no, I'm... Okay, okay, so it's it's holding its tip and it's got a decent well. And I wonder if this is one of these cases of having a dud... A dud brush. But like I said, I just don't feel safe with it. I, I don't feel that it's going to do the job I need it to do reliably. I'm looking forward to putting it down and picking up a different brush. Which is not really the sign of a good paintbrush, is it? Um, yeah, so I will. Come on, let's be fair. So I'm now going to go in for that wash, that top wash that I'm doing with all of them. Um, I'll tell you one thing with this film that's not going too badly is I'm getting a pretty good order of how much I like them. It's not just like, uh, they're all okay. They're certainly... Um, an order of preference developing. But are any of them as beloved as my Windsor and Newton Series 7 yet? No, they're not. Still questy. Okay, it's fine. So this one's fine. Let's 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 not mince words. It's fine. It just makes me nervous. Um okay, that was the last one I was testing wasn't it? So, in summary, uh, the Da Vinci K2 
Casanio is fine. So the tip is good enough, although slightly hooked. The brush that I had, when I mixed with it, it became laterally compressed, which just means you don't quite know what the brush is going to do. The tip held, it was okay, but it was absolutely not my favourite and I'm looking forward to reverting to one of the other brushes to finish up this illustration. So a summary, I'm finished with the knapweed illustration now. Um, and I have to admit that I did revert to do the flowers to my Windsor and Newton series seven. I knew I would. I'm a girl who doesn't like change. Um, right, so the Princeton Neptune, which was my favorite of the bunch, uh, that one did these top leaves. Um, it's got this very long nib that I couldn't get used to, which I found particularly difficult when mixing colors but it's got a really good tip and it held its tip throughout the whole time I painted with it. And I tried to make myself one I didn't like the other brushes, stick with one of the, the brushes that I was experimenting with. And it was a Princeton Neptune script that I kept choosing over the others. Uh, the next one that I tested was, oh, sorry. The next one that I tested was Jackson Kite. S561. I really didn't get on with this brush. Uh, e even from the first time the brush held, touched the water, it lost its point. It was very difficult to paint with. It held plenty, but it just, for me, it was not sharp enough. It wasn't crisp enough. Um, but for somebody who works looser, it would probably be a really good option. But for me, no, the Jackson's Kite is out. Um... Next, I tried Rosemary & Co. Pointed Red Dot and my initial response working on this leaf, these, these two here and half of this, was very, very positive. But within five minutes, uh, the tip was far, far blunter and there was a, just a slight, it just felt like as I used the tip, more of the barrel of the brush touched the paper than I would have expected or wanted so I went off it initially it was my favorite but within 10 minutes it was no longer my favorite and the last one that I tested was the da Vinci uh, Casanio which to start with I was disappointed with because there was a hit a uh, little hook on the tip but after I used it it was actually absolutely fine but there was a lateral compression to the brush could have been just I had a dud, a dud brush a lateral compression there that meant I didn't feel safe using it um, so I didn't enjoy using it so in order of preference my favorite out of these ones I've tested was the Princeton script Neptune my second favorite was the rosemary dot although I'm worried about how it went off the ball so quickly. My third favourite was the Da Vinci Cassanio. And my least favourite, which I would um, really not use, was the Jackson Kite. So, yeah, there we have it. I'm going to do a couple more tests, just like I did with the last set. But, um, yeah, the Napweed illustration is done. So this is just like I did with the last one, the last synthetic brush comparison. This is just a... a a comparison of each brush just with a spot of ink spot of ink spot of paint uh so the first one up is the princeton neptune script number one just putting on the paint like that and then do you remember i think with the last video we did a line didn't we see how thin of a line we can get so this is i think this is where the princeton will show you just how good it is nice gotta love that and then taking it into a, a, a tint and how it works with a wash it's fine but i don't i don't like the way the brush moves with the paint but that is my problem not the brush's problem so this is a princeton neptune prince oh you can't see that Sorry. Princeton. Neptune. 
script. Nice. Okay. One down. Applying the paint. And you can see, look at that. Such a such a such a rounded nib. So I'm going to try and do a nice thin line with this to the best of my ability. I'm rolling the brush to get a point. I mean, it ain't there, is it? Let's face it, folks. That's why I've just managed to focus in on one tiny little brush, um, one bit of the artificial brush coming out of the tip. So that's no good. So let's do the wash bit. Yeah. So yeah, it's nice with washes. Maybe that's what this brush is good for. Maybe that's what we should say that the let's be give it the benefit of the doubt. So the Jackson kite is probably very good for washes. It sure as anything ain't good for the kind of work that I need to use a new synthetic brush for. Jackson Kite. Well, you can tell by the way the writing is, right? Uh, S561. Okay, so these are the rosemary red dot pointed. Oh, it's got, got a bit of fluff in it. That's not going to help anything. So yeah, these are the ones I really like to start with. And then it just went off the boil. It just didn't didn't deliver. Hang on, it's got a bit of fluff in it, which isn't gonna help anything. Okay. Roll that. Okay, now let's see how thin of a point we can get. It's it's jagged. It's not consistent. Again, could be a dud brush. Um, they have a very, very good reputation. Um, I'm inclined to give them the benefit of the doubt. But for me, this particular brush has really not worked. Sorry, Polly, who gave it to me. Um, okay, so. Better than Jackson's, though, isn't it? So, Rosemary and Co. Uh, pointed red dot. All of these are not uh, size one. So I think for me, the spotter, the rosemary red dot spotter that I tried last time would be a better bet. So yeah, this is a Da Vinci Cassanio. I do like phthalo green, isn't it? A gorgeous colour. And again, this one, you can get a really good tip on, but it just doesn't feel reliable. It feels like if you just get your brush slightly wrong, it's not going to work for you. It made me feel unsafe. But yeah, I mean, better than... The, pit, the tip is better than Jackson's and Rosemary, but that feeling of it might be great, but actually the whole thing might just not work because it's laterally compressed. It's not great. It's all right for washes. Let's write its little name next to it. Oops, let's move this under the camera. Da Vinci. Cassano. Probably pronouncing that wrong. Or Cassanio. Who knows? Okay, so there you are. So there's the four brushes um, along with their test samples. In summary, what can I say? Um, I've summarised over and over, so I'm not going to summarise again. First, I've finished my picture of the um, common or black knapweed, Centaur and Nigra, which is a really good thing to have done. I needed to do that. Uh, out of the brushes that I tested, definitely and really surprisingly, because I don't like the way the nib is, the winner was the Princeton Neptune. Um, and overall the rosemary red dot spotter rather than round uh, which I tried in the last video was worth a try um, 
I, and again, I've said this before and I'll say it again. All of these brush choices, they are such um, a personal choice. They really are. You might like one, you might not like one. It depends what you're used to. If I wasn't so set in my ways, I would really be tempted to go for this one, this Neptune. But I know myself well enough to know that I can't adjust to the, that long nib. Um, not at my great age. Uh, so I'm probably going to stick with the non-synthetic sables. But it is interesting to see just how many synthetics there are out there. So I know I've only tried in total... How many? Four, five, six, seven in total. And there are loads more. Uh, please do leave comments about your favourites in the comments section. I'm not going to do any more tests of, of other of other ones. Um, but from yeah, for my money's worth, weirdly, the winner overall is a Princeton Neptune script. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this film. Hopefully it's been useful to you. And do visit my website, lizzieharper.co.uk, if you want to see examples of my finished work and also to check out my blogs and, if you fancy it, to buy my illustrations. Oh, yeah, you're meant to like and subscribe, aren't you? But you really don't have to. Anyway, I'm off to make a cup of tea now. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Bye.